So this right here is an EcoFlow Delta 2. This right here is an EcoFlow Delta 2 extra battery. And for the last few weeks, I've been running a, a mini split system from this setup. And in this episode, we're gonna talk about how long will it run? Is it realistic? Is it worth the overhead, the, the effort and things that you may need to put into it? How realistic is it to run a mini split AC unit from a solar generator setup like this? So if you're interested, please stay tuned. All right, so just to go over real quick, um, they, these two units are both from EcoFlow. Uh, they did not send this to us. This is not a sponsored video. I'm just pretty much saying these are EcoFlow units and they are connected with an extra battery, okay? With the extra battery cable. This is not a review of this unit. This is just really talk about how long will it run an AC unit. And obviously people are gonna say, how are you running this AC unit? And what's really gonna happen is I'm gonna tell you about that right now. So if you look on the back, of this EcoFlow unit. Um, right here, I am running a uh, 10 gauge extension cord, and this extension cord goes over to my panel, which has an easy generator switch that switches between grid power and backup power. In this case, I'm using the uh, extension cord to uh, provide backup power to the unit, okay? What's what else is going on here is this is the EcoFlow uh, MC4 to XT60i connector for solar inputs. What I have connected right now is 280 watt panels from uh, Bouge RV. Uh, they're connected in series to provide input. So on a good normal day, I'll probably get somewhere between 300 to 320 watts input. Yes, that's not enough. Uh, what I can do is over panel it. But right now with all the different solar configurations that I'm uh, trying to figure out or, or tinker with, that's what's connected right now. This right here is the easy generator switch that I was just talking about. And this right here is a yellow extension cord that is plugged in to the EcoFlow Delta 2 that we just looked at, all right? So the way that this easy generator switch works is that it allows you to select between either generator power or normal power. Or the other way to look at it is uh, inlet power from this inlet, right? Or grid power if you select it this way. And the way that, um, the safety thing about this, pretty much the benefit of this is instead of having an entire transfer switch for the whole panel, you can pretty much switch one circuit that you connect up to this right because this inlet switch or generator switch is pretty much connected through this runway here to the uh, AC circuit in this panel on the mini split right so by having to select between inlet power here or grid power here you can't possibly backfeed the grid or you can't cross between the two there's no way if it's wired properly okay so uh, most people who have a, a generator transfer switch or anything like that will have some type of interlock kit on their panel um, on this panel i really just have uh, the ac mini split unit uh, connected to uh, this circuit which allows me to switch between the two the interesting thing about this is that this uh, unit has a 15 uh, amp breaker here, even though the circuit that it is wired to is a 20 amp breaker using uh, 12 gauge wire. So uh, in this case, on a mini split like a 12K, it's not really a problem mainly because it doesn't draw that much power, but you probably won't be able to do this if you're trying to connect it to something that was gonna require high power, like you know an electric heater or a hair dryer or something like that. It may work, it may not, depending on your situation, but I'm just letting you know right now that's how this works, all right? So the other end of this is plugged into the EcoFlow Delta 2, and right now we are on generator inlet, and this is how we've been powering this mini split. This is my mystical DIY third generation mini split. This is a 12K BTU unit, and it runs at 115 volts. Now we're back to the uh, solar generator unit, and this is the other end of the cable that we were just talking about. And this right here, as I mentioned earlier, is a solar input cable that's currently connected to 280 watt panels yes we've done more before but right now that's just what's connected at this point in time okay so let's flip the unit around and talk about what's actually going on with the unit so if we flip back around hopefully you can see the screen just fine but right now um, at this current point in time the solar generator or the solar generator is outputting roughly close to 650 watts okay so in that room i will have to say uh, the room, is, it's a pretty medium sized room. I don't know the exact dimension that can, we can go figure it out later, but there's a lot of heat in the room. There's like three MacBook uh, Pros pretty much running all the time, just generating or, or rendering clips or videos that we're editing. There's uh, two uh, 
raid arrays, there's a TV, uh, there's a creek cut machine that, you know, pretty much, or cricket machine, whatever that my uh, wife uses. And I guarantee you the TV's on since she's in there right now. And it's got two large windows that are facing the sun in the morning. So the sun is just baking that room. And also heat is generated inside the room with uh, people in there and also the equipment in there, okay? So right now, it's roughly close to about 11.46 a.m. So I guarantee you my wife's in there and a lot of electronics are heating up the room plus the bodies that are in the room. So the unit that we're using right now to cool that uh, space is a 12K third generation Mr. Cool DIY unit, okay? Um, you could argue you could get away with a 9K unit or even less in that space, and that's probably true, but we got a good deal on the 12K unit and uh, as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of heat generated inside of that room, okay? Which is another reason why we went with the 12K unit, all right? So, with all that being said, let's take a look at what's actually going in on here, okay? Right now, uh, it's still a little bit cloudy outside because of the storm and, and uh, the thunderstorm that went through yesterday. Um, it's still rainy. I can, I can look outside. It's, it's drizzling. So, um, there is no solar power that seems to be coming in, at least not anything significant. It seems maybe 350 minus 330 is maybe about 20 watts. So nothing really uh, coming in, maybe besides 20 watts. But the way to look at it is right now we're drawing close to about 650 watts output to cool that room down. Um, and at this current configuration, it will run um, for about roughly about two hours. Uh, so that's an interesting setup and you're going to say, well, that's not really a long time. And I can tell you this estimate is not really accurate. So this estimate right here, two hours is based on how long it will output or how long it will run in this current condition. And with uh, most AC units, um, even mini split units, I will go ahead and tell you once the room cools down or reach, reaches the uh, 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 achieve temperature or set temperature, it will ramp down and it will no longer draw that much power or need that much power from the solar generators. So from what I'm, I've been uh, running for the last two weeks, I can go ahead and tell you when it reaches temperature and it comes down, it'll run anywhere between zero to roughly about 75 watts. Okay. Um, so it'll probably run at 650 watts for a little bit and then it'll come down. And then for the rest, maybe depending on what else is going on inside of that room, um, it'll run at a significantly uh, lower uh, wattage draw, allowing this setup right now to run for pretty much all day. Now we'll go ahead and tell you this right now with one extra bat Delta two extra battery and one Delta two, I can run that room uh, pretty much all day, one whole day uh, with good sunlight. Okay. And like I mentioned, there's a lot of heat being generated in the room. So the cooling needs are a little bit higher than a normal, let's say a room with, you know, just one person in it and not a bunch of electronics and stuff like that. So that's something to also take away here for me. I don't have a problem running this setup mainly because if it's rainy, cloudy and all that stuff um, and I don't have enough solar input coming in here, I can easily just plug it back in to my off grid system and completely charge the system at 1500 watts. And also uh, the EcoFlow Delta units have a pass through. So the pass through power coming from the off grid system will power the uh, AC unit and uh, also charge this configuration uh, too, right? So for my self setup, I don't really have a problem. I just wanted to figure out how long would it actually run for, nor for normal situations if you, know, you needed to run a mini split unit from a solar generator, okay? So with that being said, let's talk about a few of the uh, elephants and stuff like that in the room, right? So obviously this is not realistic for most people. Um, to be running in a mini split AC unit off of just solar generators, mainly because there's also a limited number of power, okay? What I will tell you is realistic in case you needed to, for whatever reason, to run an AC unit off of solar generators a lot or all the time is I would definitely go uh, with a bigger configuration of solar generators and solar input, okay? So like I said, the one I'm using earlier is, or the one I'm using right now is a 12K mini split DIY unit from Mr. Cool third generation, and that's a 115 volt unit. Um, the, that unit I think also may also come in a 240 configuration, but if you're gonna run an AC, you wanna, uh, with solar generators, you want to run a 115 or 110 volt unit, okay? Do not get the 240 units if you are trying to uh, run them from solar generators. Technically, you can run um, these, the uh, Delta Pros, double voltage hub and all that stuff in a uh, 240 configuration to, for, to, to get larger or 
power larger AC units, but you get introducing a lot of headache with two Delta Pros, a uh, double voltage hub, and the way to connect all that stuff up, right? So that's gonna be a little bit more of a challenge. It can be done. I'm just letting you know it's gonna be a little more of a challenge. Whereas a 110 volt unit, you can easily plug into almost any solar generator and get that working, all right? So that's one tip of advice for you. Uh, one thing I would also say is if you're gonna run a 12K unit or anything below, let's just say 18K, I would highly recommend you go with a minimum of a Delta II Max or a Delta Pro with at least one extra battery for each unit, okay? So the Delta II Max uh, is a two kilowatt hour battery and, you, and each kilowatt hour battery you add to it, that's a Delta II Max extra battery, will be two kilowatt hours. So if this was Delta II, extra, uh, Delta II Max extra battery and this was a Delta II Max, this would be a four kilowatt hour system. Right now in this configuration with only a Delta II and one Delta II extra battery is a two kilowatt hour system. And I'm telling you right now, a two kilowatt system can run my 12K uh, mini split in the configuration I talked to you about earlier, pretty much one whole day with close to 400 uh, watts of solar coming in uh, throughout the day. So that's a good rough estimate to go off of. What I would really like to do is have this as a Delta II Max and a Delta II Max extra battery. That way I don't really have to worry as much about the sun being out or any of that stuff being able to run this but in a you know temporary situation or something like that that's not going to be a problem if i had a delta pro and delta pro x battery that would be you know obviously closer to like a six kilowatt system which is probably a little bit more than one server rack battery here a uh, one kilowatt hour more than that so that will probably be able to run it all day right so um, if you're trying to run a mini split uh, unit all day minimum get delta 2 max or uh, delta pro and make sure you get at least one extra battery with each system um, if I were to do this all over again, I would probably go ahead and get the Delta II Max and the Delta II Max extra battery, at least one. Obviously two would be better, but uh, this configuration I just made more portable, mainly because I have an off-grid system and that's not really a problem for me. If this system runs out, I can, like I said, plug it in and I'll be good to go, not a problem. But the main thing I wanted to take away and tell everybody was, is it possible to run a mini split uh, AC unit system from solar generators? The answer is yes. The question is how long, it really depends on your need. But like I said, a two kilowatt hour system can run it uh, without solar coming in, maybe half a day, but if you have solar coming in, you could run it in all day. So hopefully this helped you out. We'll go into the app and flip through to show you, you know, the cooling needs and what's actually happening inside of the unit. So hopefully we'll throw that up on the screen. Otherwise, have a great day and we'll see you guys next time.